Hello, Hillbilly Dean here. I'll see if I can get another video up and do a little editing along the way. You'll have to just comment and tell me what you think about it. And if you like it, it makes it more interesting and whatnot. And yada yada blah blah blah. So, <clears throat> back when my wife and I was traveling, we were in our old suburban dotty. Which we still got, it's got 330,000 miles on her. Starting to rust, looking rough. That's why she's called Dottie. Plus, she was in a hailstorm, so had to get a windshield replaced on her, and she's got hail dents all over. That's a little baby baseball size hail we got one day. Yeah, baseball size hail breaks havoc on a car. <laughs> <laughs> so any hooters we're out in Oregon and at the time while we were traveling around we're like well this is, looks like a cool spot it was scenic beautiful all the green and all this stuff we we're like let's check out Oregon for a minute so my wife was on disability at the time and I got partial disability I got like 20% from the military any vets or anybody knows anything about the military we know it was freaking pain in the butt to get disability from the military especially if you don't have a leg blown off or an arm or something because I'm in one piece or whatever I'm technically not disabled so yeah that's a whole other story anyway so between us we had maybe a thousand dollars a month or something to live off of and that ain't much when you spend in the, like up to a hundred hundred and fifty dollars in one day on gas and food well, do the math, 30 days in a month divided by $150 in a day, money goes quick. Boo. So we're at this truck stop, and we're deciding, trying to come up with a game plan. Okay, we found an area, well, what are we going to do for work and a place to stay? So I come up with this idea, well, we're at a truck stop, let me see if we can get a job here, and word of mouth, asking around, talking to people, and this and that, maybe we can find a little garage apartment, or a trailer to rent, or even a camper or something to rent, I mean, whatever, find a place to stay. Once people know we're working, we're good people, we're not trash and maybe somebody will be nice enough to hook us up and say hey I got this camper out back you can rent or something whatever so anyway there's the restaurants in there you know how these places have like uh, Taco Bells and Subway and chicken places and you know different restaurants are in these truck stops and stuff so I go in and I apply at the restaurant side and my wife went in and applied for the truck stop side and everything was fine at first, my wife ran into a problem. She couldn't get a job there. But that's a whole other story anyway. Not because of like bad criminal history or anything crazy like that. It's just something came up <clears throat> from a previous time we had applied to the same place but in a different state. They like put her down as 
a no call no show or something apparently put down non -re not rehirable or some shit which was bullshit because it's their fault and it wasn't a no call no show she told them that she was going to quit because something traumatic happened driving home from work so she didn't want to work there no more and anyway I go in I work got my shirt on just got off work and it's not like I was going home where I could take a shower and change clothes and relax and whatever I walked out and got in the car and I was home I still had my shirt on and stuff and was going to go to sleep and start making money so we could get out of this parking lot and get settled and whatnot. So I think I just got off work an hour or two earlier. I haven't been off probably a couple hours. I think I was winding down and ready to go to sleep. And I get knocking on the window. Well, me and my wife was used to staying in the parking lot and sleeping in our car by this point. And so we could sleep and we'd have some privacy. We'd block up the windows. We already had our little system down. We'd like get ready for bed in like five minutes. We had all this stuff already pre-cut out and this and that and all. We covered up the front windshield. We covered our door windows. We were good. We could cover up the back windows. We had a little routine for that too. It only took a couple of minutes and we're, we're geared up to go to bed. Already covered up the windows and stuff and just relaxing and well, knock, knock, knock. And I have to like pull up a peek out the corner of the window. And I'm like, shit, it's a cop. What the hell? So I, I didn't feel like pulling this thing back down and doing all this shit or whatever, really. But I didn't want to fling open a door and freak them out either, so. Pull the thing out of the window, or the window down. Yes, officer, can I help you? And he proceeds to tell me that the gas station we were at had called the police on me that we like need leave the parking lot we'd overstate our welcome type thing but first I think he seen I had the shirt on and everything and that I worked there and it's like okay once he sees I work there he gives away that he's just fucking with me. He's been seeing me in the parking lot and he assumed I was just a homeless bum. Because once he seen I had a shirt on from there, he goes, You work here? His voice went up and everything. You work here? It's like, Yes, I just started today. It's my first day. I work here. Now I'm trying to get some sleep. They know I don't have a place. They're working with me and they gave me a job so I can get on my feet and I can, you know, get settled. And he's like, well, gosh, I don't know. The uh, manager called me and told me you're trespassing and you need to leave the property. And I'm like, who? Who called you? Like, I ain't go in there and talk to them. Like, they know I'm here and they know I work here. So, I don't know what the problem is. 
And he just goes round and round with me. He won't tell me who called him. He won't tell me all this shit. He won't say nothing. He just tells me I can't stay there. Oh man, that just that was such horse shit. He was obviously just talking outside of his ass or something. That's why he refused to go in and talk to anybody or let me go in and get somebody or anything. He just he already made up his mind he was running me off, period. That was it. They didn't want me there. So we left and we didn't have nowhere to go so we just start driving we just start driving we just leave and I'm like well this is a horse shit like come on we can't catch a break I caught a break but this stupid cop screwed us so I was just like I was mad and upset and tore up I didn't know what to do I mean, my first instinct was you drive straight to the police station and file a complaint or something. But I didn't know what was going on. Maybe the maybe they didn't want us there. They were just appeasing us or something, stringing us along. So, like I said, we just left. And I, I didn't go back. I just left. I didn't turn in my shirt. I didn't do anything. Like a few days later or so. This is what was crazy too. It took a few days. It was like three days later. <laughs> we get a call. What happened? Where are you? What's going on? And I was like, well, officer, the same after that person out of work said that they were called by a manager that we were loitering and we had to leave the parking lot. We all knew our story. We were trying to get to work and get on our feet. We already told y'all. Y'all knew what was going on. So... We assumed y'all didn't want us there or something. So we left. Like, like it's bad enough we don't even have a place to stay and we can go take a shower and clean up and do everything. But you want us to come and work there, leave the property, and then come back. It's like, we can't do all that. That was too much. So, they like wanted, wanted him to come back and all this or whatever, but more I thought about it, it's like, well, if we can't stay there and the cop's going to just keep running us off, then it ain't going to work. So, sorry. Appreciate it, but no. I can't even remember what we ended up doing. We were like staying at another place down the road or next door or something. We tried to hang around the area for a few days. I do remember that. We were around there for a few days or a week. And it was just too much. And of course by now we we spent more money you know, trying to eat and get showers and do stuff, so we stayed there hoping to get to work and save up some money and all this, so we just were even deeper in the hole and had to drive up the road, so it was like, moral of the story is don't judge, at least you, you, you be judged. Golly, people, pull the plank out of your eye before you try to pull the speck out of someone else's. Come on now. 
can't assume everybody's just white trash because they're staying in a car. Especially after this epidemic and all this crap going on, they're starving. You ain't hearing about it, and news and stuff ain't talking about it, and they ain't going to. There are thousands of people that lost their home over this pandemic this past year and stuff. I bet there's every campground in the country is packed right now. But nobody's talking about that. Yeah. Craziness. But you live and learn. I mean, that was one of many, many, many stories I got while we were traveling. So, yeah. Got run out of a parking lot while trying to get on my feet. Good times. <laughs> so, until next story, later, taters. Take care.